Okay, so recently uh, I attended um, London Film and Comic Con, MCM, on the Sunday. 2019, that is, in case someone watches in 2020. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, so yeah, basically I wanted to do a small discussion with Kai because I haven't actually given him my thoughts on this at all yet, but I basically played the demo of Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, there, was, there wasn't much of a queue when we got in there, which I was quite surprised about. Wait, no queue? Well, there was a queue, oh, but was... it wasn't as much of a queue as I thought there would be. Okay. Um, but I think it's because we went directly to it. Like I, I saw it and I beelined for it. I thought it wasn't going to be there. I actually thought it was at um, the, EGX the, only. Yeah, that was the event before it was. Which it? was yeah. an event like a couple we, of days prior. We we found out at short notice we were going to buy check if it was possible to go, but then we couldn't get time off work for that time, for that event, so we just skipped it. Yeah, so to my surprise, uh, we um, we saw a giant buster sword, and we basically beelined for it. So before we actually queued, we actually queued up to take pictures with the buster sword, which I'll throw up on this video as well, <laughs> because oh, I was... I, I you did it afterwards. No, no, it was actually before, so oh. I, I've tried my best to pull off the stance, <laughs> although it is slightly awkward. Um, I noticed just everyone was standing there with the buster sword without even trying, it, trying to do but wait, it. But wait, Classic that, cloud pose. But wait, how, how heavy was a sword? I mean, we're talking so about... So the sword weighed... It, look, it looked really heavy, but I wasn't sure where all the weight was. It weighed about 7 kilos total. <laughs> okay. Oh, by um, the way, for everyone, I didn't I, I didn't manage to attend Comic Con because I was also at work, so yeah, I missed it. Yeah, so the the sword was about seven kilos. It was made from fiberglass, and it costs about I think five to eight grand to manufacture. What's that? Oh, okay, wait. Initially, I thought you meant five. So yeah, six, yeah. basically, I, I couldn't have bought it like you suggested. <laughs> um, but wait, uh, where, uh, yeah. So so uh, yeah, seven kilos. Where was the weight? So I felt you? like. Obviously, when you hold that thing, most of the weight is going to be on on the longest part of the sword because it was quite thick. The handle, it, it was fairly well balanced, to be fair. But at the same time, fiberglass is a really light material, but I guess if it's dense enough, it will create some weight. Mm. Um, but oh, yeah, anyway, did. so I queued up to get that and... You did a good of trip. course, I picked that shit up like a motherfucking Excalibur <laughs> um, out like, of the stone. Well, you must have strained. Like, J just to, you know, well, there was a lot of people getting assistant from, assistance from oh, the guy there. Was, to there, actually, was there like a martial muscle person? Yeah. There to, oh, okay. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I just picked that straight up and, and um, held it and didn't want to let it go, frankly. Um, so, yeah, we got a couple of photos of that. And then... Obviously, we walked outside that bit and we saw that there was screens with Final Fantasy on. And my partner was like, oh my god, Sam, look. And I was like, oh my god, and my heart went. And I was like, oh, it's here. I can actually play it. So I walked straight around to the queue, left everyone behind me. And they was all running after me. <laughs> I'm running around and stood in the queue with some nice lads and basically spoke about the game for a little bit. And just how we were quite hyped up in anticipation for it and to try the demo. Obviously, I'd seen a lot of footage online of the demo and stuff. So it's exactly it's supposed to be exactly the same. It was building, it was the same build. Um, Optimization wise, I didn't notice a single hiccup. It was smooth as butter, and I was very impressed with that. Um, it was a little more pixelated than I thought, but we were quite quite close to the screen, and they yeah, had the it on quite big like screens. It looks like a cabinet. Of some sort. Yeah, it, it this. It, it was because you got you get to see the models sort of a bit more up close and without any of the compression that YouTube might apply to it as well. So it was interesting to see the the actual gameplay models up close. I did take a look around as well um, at the scenery. And one thing that I did find that was a little bit jarring to me initially was how close I was to my player model because. You, you're obviously quite large on the screen, so it feels like it just felt a bit weird running around and Could like. You not zoom out of the cam. Use the camera. I didn't actually or... try to zoom out the camera right. or anything, but that was slightly 
strange feeling to me. I, I don't know why, but I just, maybe it was because it was, it was just, like well, I maybe, said, it was maybe, a big screen and it was close to me. Maybe you were clo- you were used to 15 where it was quite small. I mean, that was, but then that was quite, that game yeah, was quite open. I felt I felt like it would be good in this game to have options to maybe zoom out from your character a bit more. But at the same time, I understand if it stays like that because it feels already, just by playing a demo, a very intimate experience. Like it wants you to be up close and it wants you to see the details and all these beautiful things that are inside this demo. Um, I did all the standard things, so I ran up to boxes and I smashed them and looked at everything and picked up items and stuff. Obviously, I weren't able to access any sort of menu because it's yeah, the same disabled, yeah. standard demo build. Um, but yeah, I, I just felt... I was amazed, and it was a very surreal experience actually playing it after watching footage so many times. But it was very much how I expected it to be based on watching the footage. Yeah, we get a feel we can get a feel yeah, of it you, when you, you sort of get a feel for it. it. Mm. Um, one thing I have to say and I know a lot of people have also mentioned this, is the music. It's so pounding in your ears, and it's there, and it really actually immerses you so deeply inside the game. Uh, I just can't tell you how good the music feels along with the game. Mm-hmm. At first, I was on the fence because I was like, this sounds really orchestrated and maybe over-orchestrated compared to how the original one was. Mm-hmm. But... After playing it, I've almost completely changed my mind because so of just it, how it, great the music it felt. fits what you're you're feeling in the game. Yeah, so and it, it was like all, um, it gels together the well. tones and stuff, and it will switch depending on what's going on on the screen, and it does a brilliant job again of making you feel so immersed in the experience. Um, so, uh, hot swapping between the cloud and barrett <laughs> also, there's um, no controller. yeah that, about, that, about? that was actually really seamless um that was really nice and but a smooth again like i could just press the up button on the d-pad and i would be straight on to the next character again the controls because it was my first time playing it i was all over the place with the controls so i won't i won't i was a bit hyped up and so full of angst that I might have pressed the wrong buttons quite a few times. Well, and not only that, in those situations, you've the got, you got the crowd, or the people that are queuing, probably watching behind you, and you're probably conscious of what you're doing, so the, you've got more pressure to maybe try not to well, screw up, but then, yeah, if yeah. you're all over the place, that's quite natural, I think, given the, uh, yeah. given the environment that you're in. So a lot of the times as well, I kept going into the menu, but whilst my character was mid-swing or something, and it would be greyed out, so I'd be trying to do moves before I was even allowed to. So that's some something that sort of caught me out because when I watch other people play it, they seem to do it quite seamlessly and they don't really have that issue. Um, I did a, a lot of blocking. I didn't quite get to grips with the rolling and the the dashing. So the area area yeah. So the area effect move the scorpion does. I was just getting hit by that every time because I thought it was. Uh, X, but or cross. Wait, what's the official term? I can't remember. Um, I thought it was one of those, but I kept pressing it and it weren't happening. So I think again, I was just so caught up in it. I was, I was just probably weren't really paying attention, and I was just trying to smash up the um, boss as quick as possible. Um, I was shocked at how much life the um, guard scorpion had. So exactly, as, as, what do we call it when, when we see the, when we saw the A3 trailer? Like yeah. The raid boss, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, you're just whacking that thing and the life not disappearing off it. It's one thing that I thought did feel strange Well, maybe compared to playing thought, other um, Final Fantasy games. I'm guessing then, this is an assumption, maybe because of, uh, of the purpose of a demo, they want you to do, they increased its health. Just to make you do more to it, so you don't get you don't get yeah. it over with so quickly. Possibly, but at the same time, I probably think they will keep that as it is, because it weren't too long, but it was it, it it had weight to it. It felt like he weren't no pushover, and he wasn't supposed to be no pushover. <laughs> like the but at the same time, I noticed because I kept hit getting hit by these area effect moves, I <laughs> I had to use quite a few potions. Were they were they infinity? Um. I didn't. No, they wasn't. 
there. Well, it was enough to get you through the game. So I didn't use potions. I actually used the cure. Cloud has cure attached to him. Oh, right, right. So, oh, okay. Uh, he normally gets cure after the uh, macro reaction. Yeah, I was using cure. Okay. And switching between. I felt like I did more. Uh, more uh, sort of like mini limit breaks with Barrett more than I did with Cloud. Maybe because he's ranged, so you decide to. Maybe yeah. Switch but then in. as I played more, I started to get into the feel of watching the ATB fill up and seeing where I was at with it. And once I started to get more to grips with it, it started to feel just that bit more smoother and smoother. Um, I didn't try out any of the shortcut commands or anything because, again... You had to configure those, I believe, because uh, like, a, like a preference thing. Yeah. So you probably didn't have time so, to go Oh, through. they might not even been there in this demo. I don't know, but I know for a fact that um, I was just... My heart was pounding. I was just like, "Oh my god, I'm finally playing it." Was there anyone like moving you along? Like, so you no. Sat there so they time. were really cool about it because there was a lot of people obviously sitting there playing, and they had quite a few units. I'll put another picture of that up so you can have a look. Um, but you can. There were quite a few different stations, and I was actually there was only two people left after I finished because I started a bit later because I, I wanted to call my family over. Because mm -hmm. they were sort of waiting, thinking they weren't allowed. But I was like, I ain't playing this without them. <laughs> like they got to be here right. and, and see my joy. <laughs> um, so I share it as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I I sort of finished later than most people, but they actually waited for everyone to finish the demo before starting the next lot of people in, which okay. I thought was really nice. So let them in in batches. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, my biggest regret is probably not walking back around to the queue and queuing up again. <laughs> but oh, to requeue sounds it's kind of annoying. Though, yeah. Well, I would have, you know, it would have been completely worth it. But it'd be unfair for anyone with you. Yeah, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to subject everyone to long queues when there was other games that could be played. But this this particular one, I, you know, I, it it definitely made me feel confident that they know what they're doing with this, and people are going to be pleased. Because I certainly was just by playing the demo. <laughs> yeah, I think I, even though I, I ain't played it, but um, seeing the trailers is enough to sell me on it. So definitely looking forward to it when the retail comes out. Me knowing you, if you'd have played it, I would say you would have liked it just as much because I know you like your action-based games. Yeah, and it looks good. Like <laughs> it's not quite Devil May Cry. It doesn't feel like Devil May Cry in the slightest. But there is a weight behind things, which I like, like swinging Cloud Sword and feeling the impact of Cloud Sword felt right. It, it felt like, you know, if you did have this giant sword and you were swinging it at a giant mech, it mm. would it would feel as close as it could without being unrealistic. Not that it's a realistic thing to be doing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, I'd, I was actually swapping to Barrett quite a lot because I think he's just so freaking awesome in this. Um <laughs> Another okay. another quick thing to touch on is um, hearing the voices, hearing them talk to each other in live, right? In in the live thing, it's it's obviously pretty similar to how you see in the demo footage and stuff. But in that particular, being well, there and be hearing them, yeah, it yeah. to be with them, it just really you know this is Final Fantasy VII man like, and it's all scaled up and it just is so good. Well, one minor concern I did have was in um, they really. Uh, Square Enix released another bit of footage where they were fighting that sewer boss and they had Tifa and Aerie f uh, with Cloud but they were do just doing like basic battle sayings without any like talking there was no interactions so I'm not sure what I'm hoping this this banter or the talk would carry amongst them all throughout the game and not just for the first boss but yeah it was just saying, it was just saying I observed that there was no hardly any speech in that sewer boss footage I'm confident that they will add it back in. Yeah. They they will keep it consistent throughout the game. Yeah, I'm just hoping that that was because they want to release footage for people to see. They just released it in the rush and didn't get any voices in or script in or whatever. They, however, they plan these things. A quick um, note um, I've noticed so far is I think they're holding a lot back in terms of what can be shown. <laughs> well, they held back for three or four years, didn't they? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. come on. I was talking to the guy in the queue about the scenes that we might see in the Shinra Tower when, you know, spoilers ahead, but the Jenna 
projecting overhead um, escapes. Oh no, who, who wouldn't know that? Did you know that? <laughs> and then, you know when it was just like really creepy and there was blood everywhere? Yeah, yeah. And there was like this really weird tone to the whole thing. I'm just so excited to see how that plays out be like a Resident Evil, in it? this format because yeah. oh, it's going to be awesome. And all I can hope is that I have added to anyone's hype for this game because I don't think it's going to let you down. Mm. So <laughs> there we go. I've said my piece on it. Um, well, we can I resume normal to... programming now. <laughs> if I get to play it, then I'll say my piece. But for now, we've got to wait till retail. So <laughs> yeah. So those are those are my thoughts on the uh, Final Fantasy VII remake demo that I played at MCM um, Comic Con. Comic Con 2019. 2019. Um, so yeah, uh, look out for more videos from Hot Swap. Um, we shall check out. <laughs>